Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 23rd, I think. Yep, June 23rd. And it is a warm day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Cloudy, high is going to be 92, I think. Um, still uncomfortably warm. No rain, and uh, we've gotten to that part of the year where it threatens to rain and doesn't. Um, so... We've been having rain tomorrow for like the past five days, so maybe it'll rain tomorrow, we'll see. It is cloudy though, and uh, the tomato plants are wanting water, so I'm trying to water them early in the morning as well as in the evening, and uh, we'll see if they survive. But everything else is doing well, got arugula and salad greens that I, more than I can eat, and uh, the peppers are exploding right now, so all good. Ah, hope your gardens are well if you have them and that your Sunday is off to a great start. And, uh, yeah, I have my Lane Crown Achievement pipe here. And I am smoking some Haunted Bookshop because I felt like doing something simple this morning. It's been, uh, it's been a fine weekend. Had a, had a rough Friday, which I talked about on the live stream. I won't won't go into much more there. Not nothing bad, just just busy. Taking care of my wife. She had a medical thing that we had to take care of. Nothing serious, just a test. And uh, yeah, we just kind of wiped out by Saturday morning, and yeah, got some stuff done yesterday. But just kind of kind of taking it easy, and I'm going to continue that today. Monday, start all over again. So, today I had a thought that I wanted to think through with you a little bit. I think you'll find it entertaining, but as you saw from the thumbnail, this is not going to be a tobacco talk or a, a pipe talk or anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to babble, and uh, a lot of you are not going to watch this. And you know what? I'm okay with that, because if one of you watch this, I appreciate it, and... If none of you watch it, I still get to talk through it, so my apologies to those of you that tune in here just to hear me talk about tobacco, but I don't like that. I like doing other stuff, too. So, I don't know if I've ever talked about existentialism on the, the, the channel here. Uh, I know I've probably mentioned it in passing a number of times. I do not like existential philosophy. I've... I've I studied it in high school because I had this bizarre English teacher who apparently was an existentialist and who taught the AP English class and insisted that we read all this, you know, Camus and stuff and, and uh, just was constantly talking about existentialism. And it's depressing. I'll sum it up as, as best I can, and I'm not an expert, and I know other folks out there have thought about this a lot more than me, and I'm going to criticize what I'm about to say, but my interpretation of existential philosophy is life is absolutely meaningless. There's no purpose to anything. So the goal is to find purpose in a meaningless life. And there is no God, because if there was a God, then there'd be purpose in a meaningless life. So, so what you're doing then is you're searching for purpose or meaning in the, this vast pool of nothingness, meaninglessness. And uh, that sounds an awful lot like looking for God. So to me, it just seems like this very circular, you know, thing. oh, life, life is, everything is pointless. Well, then why are you talking about it? Why are you writing books about it? What? Yeah, it just seems very circular to me. But <clears throat> when you're confronted by tragedy, uh, difficulty, It's easy to fall into that sort of mindset of, you know, this is all pointless. I mean, why am I doing this? Why am I, why am I continuing to struggle against what seems like insurmountable odds? Why, why do we do that? And I was thinking about that this morning. I don't actually remember what triggered the thought in me. There's nothing wrong right now. You know, life is pretty good for the most part. I mean, we all have challenges. You know, I've been dealing with some family health issues and, uh, work's been interesting lately and you know all that kind of stuff but overall i'm probably about as happy as i could expect to be so i don't know exactly what triggered this i can't i just can't remember the train of thought but i was thinking about you know 
What's the point continuing of people continuing to struggle in the face of what sometimes seems like insurmountable odds? Why do people do that? And why do we all do that at different points in our life? You know, we've all been challenged in that way. And we've all pushed through. And I was thinking about it in sort of a larger context. Uh, why do we do anything at all? You know, if you think about it, we're, we're here, we're born, we go through that formative time, and then we, we decide to do something, you know. Um, for some of us, it's a career path that we're, you know, very interested in pursuing, and we get involved in that. You know, maybe we're a scientist or a mathematician or, or, or a doctor or a lawyer, and we become very devoted to that path. You know, that, that's, what, that's what drives us. For others, it might be children and grandchildren and, and family, and, and that might be the thing. Or maybe it's a, a sport that you want to excel at and you know be the best ping pong player in the world or, or whatever. But for, the, for most of us, there is that thing. And then there are some people, I think, although I can't say I've ever met them, but the media seems to indicate that there are people out there that just, you know, they want to do the bare minimum, slide through life, and then they die. And, you know, that's okay too. I mean, maybe doing the bare minimum is your goal. I don't know. Uh, but those people seem to be rare. For the most part, everybody seems to have something that is giving them that purpose as they move through life. And to get a little dark about it, why? What's the point? You know, I'm going to be the best, let's stick with ping pong. I'm going to be the best ping pong player. I know I'm supposed to call it table tennis, but that sounds silly. I'm going to be the best ping pong player that the world has ever seen, and I'm going to spend every spare minute playing, and I'm going to watch videos and read books about ping pong theory, and I'm going to design new rackets, and, you know, and I'm going to devote my whole life to and then I'm going to die. And why, why would I do that? Why do... Why do scientists dev devote their whole life to trying to understand something that they're probably not going to understand? And even if they do, they're still going to die. What's the point of knowing... What's the point of knowing how the pine cone opens up to release its seed? I'm still gonna die. <laughs> I mean, I guess the only the only logical thing that you could be devoting your life to is uh, the secret of immortality, but nobody does that because it's futile, right? That would be even more pointless. <laughs> I had a, my, my graduate mentor when I was in graduate school. We were talking about why we do what we do. You know, why were we <clears throat> focused in on this single protein in a protozoa, of all things, <clears throat> that was responsible for this obscure little behavioral quirk that this cell had. Why were we doing that? And he said, you know, it's like the, when they were building the Gothic cathedrals. You would have people that spent their whole lives working on the Gothic cathedral, knowing that they were going to die before it was completed, because these things took hundreds of years to build. Yet they made sure that what they did was as perfect as it could be by their skill level. So we're all putting little bricks into this structure that you know, is, in, in this case, is the scientific literature, the corpus of scientific knowledge. You know, that's what we're doing. We're, we're trying to build this, this understanding at a, or at a, at a, where I'm looking for, at a cultural level, I guess that will outlive us 
that will ultimately, in theory, be complete, but we'll never see it completed. And that's kind of cool. You know, that gives us a, a reason. It's for the greater good. It's for something bigger than us. We're leaving our mark. Uh, someday, somebody, 300 years from now, might discover something and say, oh, that's like that dummy cane rod figured out back in 1987. But that won't happen, because, but, you know, it could happen. And that's why in 1987 I was doing that thing I was doing. Yeah. It kind of helps, you know, it kind of helps. So for people that are very family focused and thinking about children and grandchildren, you know, that they're what you're leaving. You know, you're, you're going to, you're going to raise your child to be the best that it can be. And it's going to go on and that's going to be your mark. And maybe you're a doctor and you're going to, you know, help patients live longer. And, and that's what you're going to do. And that's going to leave your mark. Uh, maybe you're a pipe maker and these things are going to be around a lot longer than you. And people are going to talk about, oh, you know, when I had one of his pipes, it was one of the best pipes I ever had. I wish I could afford another one. <laughs> well, it could happen. It could, not for me, but for others. So I started off thinking, you know, life is just like we're just in this waiting room. You know, and we're just trying to find something to do. And then I, th I thought about being in a doctor's waiting room and, you know, you, you, you got these magazines that you're not interested in. It's, they're, they're probably old and they're probably about things you don't care about, but you pick one up anyway and you, and you read it because you got to do something, you know, maybe, maybe that's the analogy for, for life from an existentialist point of view. You know, you've got to find meaning in that, that boredom. So you pick up a magazine and you read it. And, oh, so that's how they make paper flowers or whatever. But then I thought, no, maybe, maybe it's not that. Maybe, maybe you're, you know, for me, one of the best things that could happen in that scenario is not that I would find a magazine, but as I'm flipping through the magazine, there'd be a crossword puzzle. Um, and oddly enough, ideally a crossword puzzle that somebody started already. Because there's something fun about that. There's something fun about going back and checking their, their, their answers and saying, okay, they, they got this far, now I'm going to take it to the next step. And that's, that's the meaning. I'm going, to, I'm going to work on this crossword puzzle. I'm going to try to improve on what was given me. And I'm going to add to it. And then I'm probably going to get called in to see the doctor before I finish it. So the wait is going to be over. I'm moving on to the next step. But I'm going to put that magazine down and another patient's going to come in in the same situation, be just as bored as I was, flip through and see that partially completed crossword and they're going to start to work on it. And they're going to build on the clues that I had answered. They're going to build on the, the clues that I had filled in, I guess. Um, yeah, so, so in a sense, life is like a doctor's waiting room and, and with, with a magazine and a crossword puzzle. And the crossword puzzle of life is what we're finding our meaning in. We're never going to finish it, but we can fill in a few of the lines and leave it a, a, little, a little bit closer to complete for the next person to come along. The crossword puzzle of life. So that's my philosophical rambling for this morning, but I thought that was interesting. I just had never really... I've thought about this concept of like the Gothic cathedral builders and all that, but I've never really had a concise way to, to put it all together and to think about it for people that aren't doing such grand things as building Gothic cathedrals. But I think, I think this is a pretty good analogy. You're waiting and you're doing something to pass the time, but it's something important and it's something that's going to leave a mark. And that's what life is all about. Now the existentialist is going to say, aha, so you see the point now, this is it. No, I'm doing it because it's what God wants me to do. And life is important and does have meaning.
It's an illusion that is all meaningless and pointless and terrible and tragic. It's an illusion. Yes, we live in a broken world. Yes, things are not perfect. But it's not pointless. It's our job to find that crossword puzzle in our lives, which doesn't bring meaning to your life, but reveals the meaning that was already there. And that's the crux of it. We all have that crossword puzzle. We just may not have found it yet. All right, I'm sure I bored you enough with that. I am enjoying this haunted bookshop immensely. I'm probably going to do a little bit of gardening today before it gets too hot. Um, not much. I just got to bring in some of the greens and, and there's some peppers, some banana peppers that need to be picked. And beyond that, maybe I'll do some weeding. I don't know. We'll see what the morning brings. But I've wasted enough of your morning. If you have watched this, thank you very much. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't, I hope you found something else that entertained you. Um, if you wouldn't mind, like, subscribe, all that stuff, just because we want to build the YouTube Pipe community. We want people to see anybody's videos when they when they watch one of mine or one of yours or one of Bob's. Um, sorry, Bob. I was just picking a random name there. <clears throat> but I'm glad I said Bob. Yeah. Um, and, and this just sort of helps train the algorithm. So I'm not begging for subscribers. I'm not begging for likes because it makes me feel better. I don't look at those things, but hit those buttons because it builds our community. And do that for others too. When you're watching Bob's video, like and subscribe to him as well. Uh, it's a good thing to do. It'll bring meaning to your life. Okay. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we meet again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. So goodbye now. Mm -hmm.